if a foreign government just decided to dump 5,000 homes on the market, what would happen? The market would be flooded with properties and it would drop the prices another huge amount. Should we put an all-out ban on all Chinese buying properties whatsoever overseas? This is a big question. It has been jumbled around through politics for many years, but it's coming back up. The Chinese are sending that weather balloon across that everyone in North America saw. Are they spying on us? Are they the partner? Are they not our partner? And we are seeing this fracturing of the world of two sides separating as the two sides are making threats back and forth and globalization is falling apart. Now, should part Part of the answer B, ban all Chinese from buying homes in Canada and the United States. Now, this is the story we're going to be covering today. Let's jump straight into the article. The very first, look at the rows of homes that we see here. They're very, very different than the ones we see in China. What we're seeing in the news is China is saying proposed U.S. ban for Chinese buying in the U.S. property violates market rules. That's what they're claiming is it violates. Now, let's go to the story from Beijing. The United States is violating the principles of the market economy and international trade rules by considering a ban on Chinese citizens buying property in the United States. So they're saying they're breaking a lot of the rules. Funny, though, when they bring that up, right, that there's a lot of intellectual theft that is going on. And usually it's a one-sided trade deal between the two. But let's not talk about that. Texas and Florida, obviously the most conservative states, are considering a ban on Chinese citizens in the United States from buying property. Now, I'm going to quote this. I want to stress that China-U.S. economic and trade cooperation is mutually beneficial in nature. No, it's not. It's very one-sided. Same as between Canada and China. Promoting domestic employment and economic development in the United States by their contributions. That also is not correct. But of course, they're going to have to defend their position any way that they can. So those two places are considering a ban on it. But what about another place like us in Canada? Because Canada Canada has already put the ban into place. Canada has already put a ban on for foreigners to buy properties for two years. So this is a national ban. It took place on January 1st and it banned foreign buyers from buying residential properties for two years. And Justin Trudeau, our prime minister, said that this is leading to a real problem of underused and vacant housing, rampant speculation and skyrocketing prices. Now, they went a little bit too far and said that even that homes are not investments they are to live in. I disagree. That doesn't make any sense whatsoever. If we go back and look in time, all the way back to the 60s, I don't know how far you want to go back, but since the 60s, it's been about pretty much 35% of all housing in North America, Canada and United States was renting. And so you need 35% of the population to be investors, to buy those properties, to allow it to be rented. The problem that we're running into today is a different problem because most people want to invest where there is a rule of law, where the country itself believes in private property rights. Whereas a lot of the world doesn't want to do that. And a lot of the world is subject to places where the governments have a history of coming in and seizing all your assets. So Canada attracts a lot of immigrants from around the world. Unfortunately, what we see is a lot of wealthy people that come here park all their money into real estate. It's considered very, very safe. So they park it in real estate and then they get the hell out because they don't want to pay high taxes. That happens all the time. And so a lot of people that come here that want to live here are a different type of person. We bring a lot of people in for humanitarian reasons and so forth. And they're not the ones that are investing in the homes. They're the ones that need investors. Now, it leads to another problem that Canada has, especially in big urban centers like Toronto and Vancouver, where where the properties were going up so much in value so quickly that it wasn't worth it for them to even rent out the properties. And so we have a lot of properties that are being underused. The estimates vary, but it rests somewhere in Toronto and Vancouver between about half a million empty units that are sitting around. Now, the government doesn't have enough staff to go after all these people, even though they have implemented in some places vacancy taxes, 1% on the value of your home per year, which is enough to sway them when property prices are going up 15, 20% per year. They don't care about the 1%, even if they did get caught. But the majority of the time, it's a voluntary declaration. So not a lot of people in China who own all those properties are voluntarily going to say, hey, where can I send some more money? All right. So let's get back into something else I wanted to show you. This is some of the problems that we're facing in Canada. So in Toronto, if we look up the detached properties, the January numbers came in the last 12 months, we are now 27% down. 
And if you look at the total greater Toronto area, you can see here, I just selected all the Toronto area that is freehold. So separate properties. If you look at that, there's only 5,000 homes that are open right now. 5,000 properties that are for sale. Just to put that into context, and it's the size of city that Toronto is and the surroundings, we're talking about millions and millions and millions and millions of homes. If that is anywhere below like 12,000 homes, we are already low low supply. So compared to last year, when we were looking and only had a thousand properties on the market, that was chronic shortage. All right. So let's take a look at that again. Today, all of GTA, Durham, Halton, Peel, Toronto, and York, there's only 5,000 properties. So we're still at a chronic shortage, even though it's much higher than today. But something important to know is that prices are always set on the margin. But what does it mean on the margin? Because that is where all the prices go. Remember, there's only 5,000 properties for sale in Toronto. Just remember that. Let's go and take a look at this picture of a suburb. This is in Texas, but this looks like Canada as well. Just let's say this entire section and this entire section were all $1 million per house. $1 million. And then nobody has any houses up for sale. Just one house comes up for sale, say this one, and they sell it for 800,000, 20% less than what we were expecting. So I can tell you that now anytime anybody on these two blocks would go to a bank and get their property evaluated, they're going to look at the one that sold. And now every house on these blocks is going to be rated at 800,000. So you didn't actually have to make a hundred houses all turn down 20%. It only took one person to sell at that lower price to set the new standard. So that means that only one out of the hundred have to sell at that price. And now there's a new standard. That's on the margin. So when we're talking about Toronto, for example, where I am, and there is so many million homes with only 5,000 on the market, just imagine the danger that could happen. Let's say if a foreign government, any government, you pick your, your poison, that they were coming up and collecting a lot of homes. Just let's say they were able to collect 5,000 homes. Sounds like a lot of money to buy that many for a person. Yes. But for a country, no. So imagine that they had those 5,000 properties that we have on the market today that we just saw and another foreign country found enough money to buy 5,000 homes. If they just decided to dump those 5,000 homes on the market, what would happen? The market would be flooded with properties and it would drop the prices another huge amount and it could evaporate trillions off the books just by doing so. And that could run a lot more problems. We can have bank runs. We could crash bank stocks. A lot, a lot of problems. We're talking about a lot of financial contagion that is involved in that. So really, this could be construed as looking at one country because they just did something to North America that they might be fighting back. In Canada, though, foreign buyers don't really account to very much because the majority of them all have a cousin that lives here anyway from the major buyers that are overseas. They all have one family member that lives here anyway and just will get it through them. So I don't expect it to actually affect the prices very much. But from a national security perspective, all countries have to look at policies to make things a bit safer. Now, if you go look at some of the big guys like BlackRock that own tens of thousands of homes or places like Zillow that bought tens of thousands of homes, this also is the exact same situation. What happens if one company that owns tens of thousands of properties goes under and they now have to force their tens of thousands of units back on the market at one time? It also floods the market and could cause all the same contagion that we're talking about. Although, you know, when a company is going under, it's not actually like a deliberate, maybe let's call it act of warfare kind of thing. But if another country wanted to do that, they would be able to. So it doesn't matter what country it is. But if two countries are hostile together, then maybe they shouldn't be buying properties back and forth in each other's space. We don't see it too much where Canada is going and buying properties in China, but we definitely see it the other way. Canada buys a lot of properties in the United States, but they are the longest non-armed border in the world. We travel back and forth every day. We have a lot of agreements back and forth and we're the number one trading partner of the United States. So we have a special relationship with the States and that's why even Canadian banks will lend on US properties. So how do we move forward from this? I do think that when countries are not getting along very well, 
we should consider putting more steps to slow down a possible financial contagion. But I also think that there should be limits for private companies to be able to do something similar too. Now, how to do that, I don't know. I'm also not one for huge government involvement, but there is a line that we have to understand that if it's crossed, we have to do something about it. There is a plague in Canada, especially in the big cities like Montreal, Toronto, and Vancouver, also Victoria, where homes are purchased, the money is parked, and they leave again. And so having that happen, we're also putting a stranglehold, a noose around the neck of anybody who lives in that country. Now, this could be any place in Europe or the United States. If you only have maybe 100,000 rental units, but then all of a sudden foreign buyers come in and take half of it, put it on the books and let them sit vacant. What do you think happens to the rent price of all the other units that are left over? Now you have three, four, five people trying to rent every single unit and prices go up and up and up. So it ends up being really not fair on the people who have to rent here and all the profit is made overseas. So there's a lot to think about and a lot to unpack. Anyway, should they ban just the Chinese? Probably not. Should they ban probably a lot of countries just for their own, the government's financial contagion plan? I think so. I think we would have to do something. But I think every country has to do their own thing. But I think that there's a lot of reasons why different countries should be doing similar things. Anyway, if this gives you guys any value, I hope that it does. Please consider subscribing. Please send it to a friend. And if you like this stuff, let me know why. If you don't like this stuff, let me know why. I'd like to know as well. Anyway, I wish you the very best. Thanks, everyone. Everyone.